Eugene Packwood, the chairman of Anglican Renewal Ministries Canada. In this episode of Wind and Fire, we're going to hear from an Anglican priest who's been involved in charismatic renewal for many years. And I'm going to let him introduce himself. Hi, everyone. I'm John Rodham. I currently live in Vancouver, BC. I'm a retired Anglican priest. I grew up in Nova Scotia and I had three parishes there before moving out west um, in 1994. Uh, to a parish in Vancouver, and then 10 years um, in Seattle. And uh, so it's great to be back out west. Our kids uh, grew up here, so we get a chance to see our grandbabies. Uh, I'm thrilled to be part of this series on deeper encounters with the Holy Spirit, the baptism of the Holy Spirit. This occurred in my first parish. I went, uh, and the parish was, uh, I was told by the bishop that there are a lot of problems in the parish. Well, I discovered a lot that he didn't know about. <laughs> and I had this uh, business plan, and uh, I shared it with other people. I thought it was great. So I started to work the plan, and I fell flat on my face. It was not a pretty sight. So uh, uh, I knew that I was supposed to be there, and uh, but I just it just wasn't working. So I said, God, what's wrong? And he said, well, this is the deal, John. Uh, you need to find out what my plan is. I'm, I'm not in the business of blessing your plans. Uh, you find out what I'm about and what I'm doing, and I will bless that. I will walk with you and, and, and uh, partner with you in that. So that changed everything. Uh, in the process, uh, great desperation came on me for more of God. And uh, I had a, the opportunity to read a book by Dennis Bennett on the baptism of the Holy Spirit. And I simply followed that pattern. Uh, it was a, a threefold pattern, actually four, but um, it, the first was to reaffirm or to receive Jesus as Lord in your life, as Savior and Lord. And uh, I had already done that, but uh, just an opportunity to reaffirm. And when Jesus comes alive in you, your body becomes a temple of the Holy Spirit. He dwells within. And so the, the expression of the Spirit is something that bubbles up from within. And so... Uh, what happened was I uh, was directed to do what I call spring cleaning, to confess any sin. Because if you bring things into a new experience with God, it can create confusion. So I had that wonderful opportunity just to receive forgiveness and cleansing. And then uh, the next was simply to ask, to ask the Father for his Holy Spirit. And I began to just, I was on my couch in the living room, and I began to speak out in another language. So John asked, and he received. I asked him what the experience sitting on the couch felt like. You know, I, I didn't feel anything in particular when I was released in that way. Um, I, I believe that the Holy Spirit will manifest in different ways, but this was one way that I was endeavoring to enter into a deeper place of worship and praise through spiritual language. So some people have profound experiences. It was very quiet for me. Uh, when I came to faith, I simply knelt in my room and welcomed Jesus to take the reins of my life. <laughs> uh, and that was very quiet. Uh, and also the baptism. Uh, so I realized that Jesus, in a very personal way, is, is my Savior. And in a very personal way, was my baptizer in the Holy Spirit. And that was very important to me, to know that Jesus does this transaction. Because I've had the privilege of leading other people to faith and other people into a deeper encounter with the Holy Spirit and realize that it's not me, it's the Holy Spirit calling us to himself, calling us to uh, that deeper encounter with the Holy Spirit. And it, it came out of a deep place of hunger. God uh, often responds to that place of desperation and hunger. So Jesus baptizes in the Holy Spirit, and the Holy Spirit calls. I asked John how things changed in his life thereafter. Uh, the consequence of that, as I began to, uh, dare I say, practice, but begin to pray in that way, uh, was that we began to see amazing things happen. Uh, as I prayed for people, we saw healings. Uh, people that were supposed to have surgery, uh, they were healed. Uh, Holly prayed for a person that had broken their leg, and the leg was healed instantly. I mean, this was unheard of for us. But uh, God just began to work in a deeper way. I describe it like um, uh, shifting into overdrive. If you're driving a car, you just draw, you just shift in. It's not anything that we do. We're just available to the Lord, and he works through us in amazing ways. 
So uh, that parish began to turn around within oh, 18 months or so. Um, and uh, what the key was to listen to God, I began to pray with the other leaders in the church. We began to uh, have a sense that God was leading us in certain ways. And so that listening prayer was very, very important as we worked together uh, for God's kingdom. So uh, I'm very thankful for the Holy Spirit. I'm glad that happened. It was a very painful experience to be in that place of crashing and burning. But I'm glad it happened in my first parish because I discovered the Lord in a whole new way. I'm very thankful. So having discovered the Lord in that whole new way and having learned to listen, I asked John exactly how that listening worked. Well, uh, it happens in different ways. I, I believe the Lord is very, very creative. Sometimes he'll remind you of a scripture or a song or whatever. Uh, he's very creative. And, and it's sometimes, uh, on occasion, I've heard a, an audible voice. Other times it's been an impression or this, that, or the other thing. So what I try to do, I call it putting my antenna up when I'm praying for people. And just, you know, tune in and say, it's God. Father's heart to bless his kids. He really loves us. And so I remember early on, because this was new for me and new for a lot of people in our tradition. And so they sort of put me on a pedestal because we saw some amazing things happen. And I, it kicked in my performance thing. You know, I had to really make it happen. And then the Lord sat me down and said, John, do you need to realize this is not about you? It's about me. And I want to use you as a vessel to be a blessing. So what I find often is just, I said, Lord, I'm available to you. I just want to be in a place where I'm not in the way. Uh, I joke often and say, you know, the gospel for some people is offensive. I don't want to add to that. <laughs> you know, I want to be available. But I've seen amazing things happen. Cancers go, uh, profound healings, eyes open under my hands. And uh, I'm just a country kid from Eastern Canada. But uh, God has opened up many doors, um, and I've seen remarkable things happen. It's quite a journey. It's an adventure. Every day is an adventure. <laughs> I asked John about his assessment of the interest of the things of the Spirit among younger Christians. Well, I think that God is stirring a hunger among the younger people. But uh, I find that it's... Uh, the, he will manifest in certain ways that are relevant to them. And sometimes the old wineskins don't really grab people the way that they may have grabbed us. Uh, I had a strange experience with God, though, because uh, he always has created a hunger. I've always uh, wanted to hang around with people. Uh, I remember a Nigerian uh, fellow said, hang around with people that are doing the works of God, not just talking about it. And so I've had the privilege of meeting many people around the world that move in the things of God. You know, uh, you mentioned about words of wisdom and knowledge. Um, you can develop the, these things. Uh, these uh, are called the phanerosis gifts, or the manifestation gifts in 1 Corinthians 12. And I tell people that the gift is the Holy Spirit. He'll bubble out in any number of ways. I've seen all of the ninefold gifts manifest through me. I'm not saying that to break. It's just that the Holy Spirit's in me, and he'll come out at different times. And I'm that old like you, Gene. <laughs> that I've been around enough that I've seen you know, the Spirit will work in different ways in, in me and in, in others. So it's very exciting to see because he's the one that leads the dance. We are invited to partner with him. We can't heal a fly, but it's his work. I remember talking... Uh, about a, with a friend, Odis, who's a retired Anglican clergy also. And he told me about this gentleman who was called to healing ministry after he retired. And a very profound fruit in his ministry. And so uh, this friend said, well, what's the key? And he said, well, there's two things. He said, first, I know nothing. And the second thing is, I can't do anything. <laughs> and really, it has to originate in the Lord. Sometimes when we see people uh, being used of God, we think of, that it's their gift and their ability, but it really is the Holy Spirit and being yielded to him, following him, and learning about how these things manifest. When I first uh, was exposed to healing, my hands would tingle. Not that that happens with everybody, and, and you know, but it just happened with me. And uh, I, I thought it was, you know, it was a scary thing. I thought it was demonic, perhaps. And then a, a seasoned friend said, no, uh, this is... Uh, 
something of the spirit that he'll manifest with heat or tingling or what have you. And that was very helpful. So the next time that happened, I was looking around saying, who can I lay hands on? <laughs> but uh, th this is a growing thing. That's why St. Paul said, not concerning spiritual gifts, brothers and sisters, I would not have you be ignorant. It doesn't mean that people are unintelligent, but they haven't been trained. You don't want me messing around with your car, because I know very little about cars, but many people do. And it's not a big deal. I mean, people can change oil and things like that. Well, the same thing in the spirit. People can learn to minister in the things of the spirit. And it's usually, as Jesus said, to make disciples. We, uh, I was mentored and discipled by you know, older, wiser people in the Lord. And thank you, John Rodham, for mentoring us in the Lord. I'm Gene Packwood for Wind and Fire and for Anglican Renewal Ministries Canada. Look for more from John coming up soon. Please share this with your friends, like us on Facebook, subscribe to our YouTube channel. May the Holy Spirit of God fill you generously. Amen. Thanks for watching.